All right. Well, the streaming has started already. This is a little bit, it's a little bit too loud. I can't listen to myself that much. There we go. Okay, so what we'll do today in the lab is to um, implement the stuff that we talked about in lecture. Okay, so that's you know, the, the objective of this class. But we'll also do it in a way, you know, just like uh, on Tuesday, you know, we'll start to make our own components, but, using, but not using the smiley face and the thought bubbles. <clears throat> All right, so we'll do this, you know, the, we'll make a circuit for the carry function first, which is, a, which is really just a conjunction. So it's pretty easy to make this one. So we have, you know, two input pins and one single output pin. And in between, we have a single AND gate, a regular AND gate. Let me get a smaller one with only two input pins. Okay, and that's basically it. But I don't want to use just a regular AND gate in the final design because I want to emphasize that it is this is doing what the carry function is supposed to be doing. So we will right click on the name of, the, of this particular circuit and then we select Edit Circuit Appearance. And this time we'll just keep the chip appearance. Okay, I'm not gonna spend any time to make this you know, funky. So we'll just use a C to indicate this is the carry function. And we are done with this one. And then we go to Project, add another circuit. This time we are dealing with the R or the result of a binary addition. And you know, I could use um, Exclusive or, but I'm not going to do that. <clears throat> so once again, we have two inputs, but this time we also need um, three gates. We'll need two AND gates, each one having only two inputs. And then we just duplicate it. Now, when you have AND gates, you know, remember what we used in class, you know, we, we add, I added a bubble um, at the input to negate the input. And you can do it you know, inside LogiSim too. So if you want to do that to LogiSim, I'm going to use exactly the same uh, geometry as in the, um, in, in the picture in the lecture. So if I want to negate the top bubble, I can now go to negate one, which is inside the properties right here. See how it says here, you know, negate one in parentheses top? This is the one that I'm negating. So this way, I'm negating the first input, but not negating the second input. With the second AND gate, I'm doing the opposite. I'm negating the bottom one, just like that. So this is identical to the uh, hand-drawn circuit in class, except you know, I'm doing everything in LogiSim so that it's not just for documentation purposes. I can actually run this later on and see how it actually works. Professor, what did you add? Huh? I did not catch what did you add the circles in the You select negate one or negate two. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So now we make some connections. This one goes here, but also to here. This one on the other hand goes, okay. This may look, this may look a little bit ugly, like that. Okay, it, it still works, it's just ugly. Um, and then we have a single OR gate to combine the output of these two AND gates. So we'll make sure this is small as well, and only having two single, two inputs. like so, and then we have one single output pin for this component. Now you can always double check to make sure the design is working first before you turn it into a component and start to use it as a component. Okay, if one side is one, the other side is zero, the output is a one, that's what we want. If both sides are ones, I don't want the output to be a one, and this time it is correct as well, and then we turn the first one back into a zero, once again the output is a one, and if they're both zeros, the output is also a zero. So this circuit works the way it is supposed to. So now is a good time to turn it into a circuit or the edit circuit appearance. Right click on the R and then select uh, edit circuit appearance. Um, and I just want to label this as R. So I know this is the R function instead of the C function. That's all I need. All right. Are there any questions at this point about the design? Okay, I have one chip to do the C function and one chip to do the R function. Okay. All right, 
So at this point, I'm going to um, implement what we call a half adder. So we'll go to project again, and then we add the circuit. And this is going to be called a half adder. A half adder, as the as the name implies, is only doing some using do it's doing half of the addition. So the way it works is you give it two bits to add. Okay, one, two, and it will give you the result and the carry of adding these two bits, and that's all it's going to do. Okay, now since we already have a component to deal with the carry and one component to do with the result, we just pull those components out of the library. And then we just say that, you know, this goes into here, but it also goes into here. And then this goes to here, but it also goes down to here. In other words, all we are doing here is to figure out what is the result of adding these two bits and what is the carry of adding these two bits. Is that okay? All right. And then we have two output pins corresponding to the output of these two components. One is the result of R, the other one is the result of C, like so. And it's time to uh, turn this into a component by you know, right clicking on HA in this case, and then click Edit Circuit Appearance. Now this one, I do want to label the output, because otherwise it's kind of hard to differentiate which one is which one. So I'm going to label it, use the um, text tool, label the first one as R, and then label the second one, the bottom one, as C, because one is the carry, the other one is the result. The input, I'm not too concerned because it is for addition, and addition is commutative. Now, if this is dealing with subtraction, I will probably be more clear about you know, which one is which one. Since it's addition, it's not as big of a deal. All right, so we have now some you know, basic components here. Yep? Can you go over how you made C? You just use the text tool. And you click somewhere on the screen, and you, you type. Mm -hmm. And I can also add a name here. You know, this is a half adder. So I'm adding the half adder uh, label into the chip itself. There we go. OK, so do we have any questions at this point? Sort of, no problem. Yep. So go back to C. If I double click it, that should go there. C is easy. It's just an AND gate. <clears throat> and A and D. All right. OK, so now we want to go back to the main design. OK, now it, the, we, we have something else that we have to do, but we'll go back to the main design first. And then what we'll do is we'll, we'll deal with a multi-digit setup. Um, so let's go ahead and give it, like, we'll make a 3-bit by 3-bit adder. So we have, you know, 3 bits for the first number. And then we have 3 bits for the second number. Oops. Uh, there we go. So we have three bits for the first number, three bits for the second number. It's always helpful to label these things. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna call this one x0, being the least significant bit of x. This one is x1, and this one is x2. And then the same thing with these guys, except they are y's. So we have y0, y1, and y2. So we are just labeling stuff at this point. Okay, there we go. So as you can probably imagine, you know, the HA that we created would, uh, would apply to X0, Y0. They would go into A, you know, half error. Okay, so we'll go ahead and slap something here. So we're gonna slap a HA over here and duplicate this a few times because, you know, each one or each bit requires, you know, about the same kind of setup. So we'll put x, uh, x0, y0 into the first half adder, uh, x1, y1 into the second second half adder, and then the, this one into the third one. Okay. 
So now the question is, what are we going to do with the outputs of these you know, path patterns? Yes, go ahead. Uh, can you show us HA again? Now, you don't have to follow me, okay? This is a lab, and there's nothing to turn in, so it might be better off to focus on what I do and also you know, conceptually what I'm doing, how this is connecting to the concepts that we talk about in class. Because it, um, I, I would double check and make sure it's recording, okay? It is streaming and the audio is being captured. So as long as this engine is, wor is running, what I'm, what I'm doing on the projector is recorded along with my voice, which means you, know, you, you, can, you can redo this later on. But the concept is more important because you're, you're fresh from the lecture, and so all those you know, theory and all the symbols that we talk about in the lecture is still fresh in your mind. So it's, it's better off you know, spending your energy to make the connections rather than um, busy copying what I'm doing on screen. So switching back to the main here. What am I going to do with this R? What, what do you think it, it, it corresponds to? This is you know, x0 plus y0, the result of those two. Okay, so it's, it's the sum already, right? This is, is the bit zero of the sum. <clears throat> okay, so we'll have a whole bunch of output pins um, and label this one as S0. Ah, this is good, it works right away. Because for bit zero, it doesn't have a carry from a less significant digit. So I don't need another tab adder for that purpose. Well, now we have a problem because what about the carry coming out of the first or the top half adder. What about this this output pin here? Where where is it, where is it supposed to go? Well, it needs to be combined with something, right? Yeah. So, and we we I think we need more half adders, don't you think? Yeah. Okay. Because okay, let, let me just kind of uh, do this part first, so that you know, so that you can see all the actual output pins of this particular design because that will help you think about oh so what else do we need this is s1 okay i just mistyped it s1 and this one is s2 and then we have an overall carry the overall carry i'll call it you know c out okay carry out okay which is not c out in c plus plus this is carry out the output of the carries okay so now we have a lot more output pins here than, well, not a whole lot, but they're not connected. So can someone tell me what I should do with um, the output, the, out, the carry output of the top half adder? What, where is it going to go? You go to another half adder. Exactly. Okay, so this one needs to go into a half adder combining with this one here. Now, this design is not going to work. I have to move it a little bit because otherwise I don't have enough space. Okay. So these two, these two wires should be the input of another half adder. Because, you know, when I describe, you know, how to perform the addition, remember I have two actual partial additions. So we need another half adder right here. So we pick out another half adder, slap it here. Okay. What about the result of this second half adder by combining the carry of the previous column and the result of adding the two given digits? What do I do with that result? That's S1. Very good. Okay. Good job. Okay. Now we have another problem because we know that you know, this is going to be about the same thing for the third row. Okay. So we need another half adder here. Okay. So we'll go ahead and duplicate this one and say that we have another half adder. Now with this half adder here, just like with this half adder, I am expecting to have one carry coming from the previous bit. But I have two outputs here. I have one carry here. I have another carry here. Do you remember in the notes how we combine the two carries? Or we do or. Very good. Okay, good job. So you guys remember what we talked about in class. So now we go to gates, we select a OR gate, okay, and turn it, make it smaller first, and then we'll find a place to fit it. Okay. 
Um, let's see. I can put one here. There we go. And then we connect the other one here. And then the output of this is the overall carry from the second least significant bit. That goes into one of the inputs of the half adder of the most significant bit. The result of adding the two individual bits would go into the other one. And then the result here would go to S2 because that's the actual sum. Is that part okay? Are you guys connecting the connectivity of these components with the discussion in class? Is that okay? Now, this is another reason why you may not want to copy what I'm doing, because I'm going to rip all this apart and then do it again, but in a more elegant way. <laughs> but there's a reason why I, can, I want to do that. What about this overall carry out? What do you think, you know, um, would contribute to the overall carry of the three bit, three bit by three bit average. Like or of the two carry outs? Yep, exactly. Uh, or of the, uh, the dangling two carry outs, right? Okay, so we'll duplicate all of this stuff here. And you can see how this is really kind of regular. I mean, this design is very um, symmetric. And this just goes out to the output, that's it. Okay, so I claim that this is a 3-bit by 3-bit adder. Do you believe it? No, you should not. <laughs> if I say, you know, this is da 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 you always question it. Okay, you always say, I, I'm not buying it. Okay, show me that it works. Okay, so right now it's already showing you one particular case. It's showing you that 0, 0, 0 plus 0, 0, 0 is 0, 0, 0 with no overall carry. That's one test case already. Well, let's try something else. Give me, you guys can tell me what you, how you want to test it. The two numbers only have to be from zero to seven each. And I can do the rest. One plus one, okay. So one plus one would be zero, 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 one, zero, zero, one. One plus one is zero, one, zero with no overall carry. Zero, one, zero is two, so that seems to work. What about seven plus one? I want to see what is seven plus one, okay? So seven is one, one, one in binary. So we have one, one, one as a binary number. And then one is just zero, zero, one, which is zero, zero, one. And we end up with a result of zero, zero, zero with an overall carry. Is that right? It is right because the overall carry for a three bit adder is represented that we have an eight. We have a quantity of eight that cannot be represented as a part of the sum because the sum is limited only to three bits. So it still works, okay? So now how many test cases can you possibly fit into this thing? If you want to do a, an exhaustive test of this entire thing, what, how big is that table? 64. 64 because you have eight, you have, you have six independent input pins. These six, you know, x2, x1, x0, y2, y1, y0, those are all independent. Okay, the state of one of the input pins does not affect the state of the other input pins. So two to the power of six turns out to be 64. So there are 64 possible cases that you can go through to exhaustively test whether your design works or not. Is that okay? What do you think? Uh, yeah, go ahead. I was wondering, can you do seven plus seven, or is that outside of, of its parameter? A seven? Seven plus seven, like. Seven plus seven? You can do that. Yep, seven is one, one, one. So we have one, one, one plus one, 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 which turns out to be one, one, zero with a carry of one. 110 is 6, but the overall carry is indicating that there's an 8, a quantity of 8 that, is, that we cannot store as a result of the sum. 8 plus 6 is 14, so it works. Okay, good job. All right. Uh, what if I want to turn this into a 6-bit um, adder? Exactly. You just, you, know, you just do a whole bunch of copy and paste. Okay. In fact, you know, the one thing that is uh, representing what you need to copy and paste will be the middle. Yeah. That's
that entire thing, you just need to you know, repeat it a few times, as many times as you want to increase the width of this atom. So every time you go, oh, so we are doing a copy, paste, and modify, what, what should you do? Subcircuit, sub subroutine, yeah. abstraction, you know, however you want to call that. But you don't want to copy, paste, modify all the time. Okay? Not when you're designing circuits, not when you're writing programs. Okay? Every time you have to copy, paste, modify, you have to think, is there a better way to do it? In regular C, not even C, that tells you that you should be using structures and using subroutines. In C, which is object oriented programming, you should be starting to think about classes and class hierarchies. In the circuit design, we can use subcircuits. Is that okay? All right. So we have identified that this portion here is representing what we need to replicate you know, over and over and over again. So what we'll do is copy and paste it once, make a new component, and then come back and change everything to use that new component. So I will do Control C, copy, go to project, add a circuit, and guess what is the name of this circuit? The other one was called HA for a half adder. This one is going to be a full adder or adder. Okay. I'm going to use FA for full adder just to emphasize that this is actually for the entire column. Control V, paste. Okay. Not quite done yet because you know I kind of need to change the labels. This is just x, not x1, because we don't, we don't care which bit it's dealing with. It is just dealing with a particular bit. Um, same thing with s1. Don't worry about the blue line and the, uh, the, uh, the red line at this point. The blue line is indicating we have an input that is undetermined, okay, which is usually a bad thing. And the red line also means that there's an output that cannot be determined because the input in order to determine this output is undetermined. Okay? So that tells us that we need a few more pins. Okay? And I'm going to add an input pin first to here. And then we have to add an output pin to here. How do you think I should label these pins? Or you know, I should ask the other question, what is the purpose of this pin? What is going to feed into this pin? The carry from the previous column. Okay, so I'm going to call this C in or carry in, <coughs> which has nothing to do with C in in C plus plus programming. <laughs> what about this output pin here? What is the purpose of this output pin? It's a carry out. It's a carry out because it is the OR of the two carries that can be that can generate a one a carry of one to the next carry. So this is the overall carry out. C out. There we go. So now we have a sub-circuit that represents the addition, the, an entire column of a multi-digit addition. Is that okay? Next thing we do is to turn it into a component. There we go. But we also want to label these things because you know, the, of the three input pins, now they are actually symmetric. Okay, you can, you, can, you can label these things wrong and they will still work correctly, but only because this is an adder and not a subtractor. Okay, with a subtractor, you have to be much more careful. So as a good habit, <coughs> you should label these things you know, accordingly. You know, C in, this is C out, and this is our sum. And then these two are the individual input bits. You know, one is X and one is Y. I know these are not aligned very well at this point, but alignment is easy after the fact. You just have, you just have to drag the text a little bit until they align the way they uh, align the way you want. Okay, y goes down a little bit, x goes down a little bit. So I think that's clear clear enough. You know which pin is which pin. Then we go back to the main design and remember what I said. We'll rip it apart. So we go select, get rid of all this stuff here. Okay, get rid of all these wires. Okay. And we're going to slap in three full adders. Okay, so we'll put in the adder first, and then we'll worry about okay, but what do we want to put into these pins, and what do we want to do with the output pins? Okay. All right. Well, several things are pretty clear, just because of the labeling, right? 
the x something should go into the x, the y something should go into the y, the s should go to the s something. So those few wires are pretty clear what we should do with it. Because these are the actual digits coming in from the numbers that you're trying to add. <clears throat> so they go into the x and the y. The sum is s, so they go to the output pins. Um, they are red at this point because you know some of the input pins are not specified correctly yet. Okay. And then the other one would be the C out and the C in. Well, just because of the naming of those pins, you probably kind of know which one should connect to which one. Okay, the carry out of the previous column should go to the carry in of the next one. So that's pretty easy with the stuff in between. But then we have a question of, what about the first and the last? That becomes a question. What about this guy here? What about this guy here? Well, this guy is easier because we have a dangling output pin that nobody is feeding it. That matches it perfectly. What about this guy here? We just make it a constant zero. Well, at least for the time being, we make it a constant zero. Okay, so you, if you go want to use a constant, you go to wiring, you pick out a constant. The default value of a constant is one, but you can always change it by looking into the um, properties of a constant and then change the value to 0x0. Zero zero. Now we have a full adder. Now we have a 3-bit by 3-bit adder that makes use of the full adder component. So now if I want to add another digit, it's easy because I just have to um, add two input pins, slap on another full adder, and another pin for the output. It becomes very scalable. So it would appear that we are done with the concept of binary adders. Because we can slap, you know, we can replicate this design or we can expand it as many times as we want. We can make a 64 bit adder out of this, right? It has one major problem. Okay, the nice thing about this is very simple, right? I mean, you, you can see how easy it is to extend this to handle additional bits. But the biggest problem of this design is the dependency of the carries. In other words, in order for this, okay, I'm going to switch to this tool here because I can highlight the entire um, wire. In order for this wire to be meaningful and correct, the input into this full adder has to be correct first, right? The x and the y are not the problems because they are in the numbers that are given to you from the very beginning. So they have always been there. X2, Y2 have been there, has always been there you know, since the beginning of the operation. That's not a problem. But the third input, C in, is the output of another adder. So you need this wire to have a meaningful output before this can have a meaningful output. And there's a propagational delay with the gates. So every time you change the input to a gate, there's a proper case, propagational delay for the output to be to be called correct. Okay? So as a result, if when you when you cascade this thing back, in order for this wire to be meaningful, this wire needs to have something that makes sense. So when you have this design extended out to a 64 bit adder, it takes a while for bit 63 to be meaningful. Okay, so this is called a carry ripple, uh, carry ripple design because you're rippling the, the, the carry throughout all the full adders. And the nice thing is, once again, it is simple to implement, easy to look at, easy to figure out how to extend it. But the drawback, the disadvantage of this particular design is it is very slow. If you have a 64-bit adder, it's going to be twice as slow as a 32-bit adder. The 32-bit adder is twice as slow as a 16-bit adder, and so on. Is that okay? Does everybody understand why this design is slow? Now, when you read a textbook, okay, most textbooks in computer architecture, at least introduction to computer architecture, We'll stop here and say, okay, now you have a multi-digit you know, binary adder, we're done, we move on. But this is not something that is practical. In other words, you don't do this you know, at Intel or AMD. They, don't, they do not design adders 
and provide this. So in, I'm not going to talk about it today because it, it is uh, a lecture material for next Tuesday. But we have another mechanism to make this much more efficient. In fact, we'll make it almost constant time. In other words, you look at the 32-bit adder, and then you can use the mechanism that we'll be talking about next Tuesday and make a 64-bit adder that is almost as quick as a 32-bit adder. It might be a little bit slower, but it's only slower by the log of the number of bits of the integer. Which is great, because you know, when you look at the log of something, it increases very, very slowly. The log of 32 versus the log of you know, 64 is only off by a little bit. The log of 64 versus the log of 128, is, is diff they are different by the same amount. The log of 128 and the log of 256 is also differing by the same amount. So something that grows with log is much better than something that is linear. So next Tuesday, now let me show you where you find the notes, because I, I do want everybody to have a chance to read ahead of the class, because that's actually not easy reading, I would say. So it might take you a little bit of time just to understand what it is, why it is important, and then the actual mechanism can also take a little bit of time. But I want to show you where you find it. This is, um, okay. okay, so we are currently in this particular module, which is here, adding binary numbers. We are pretty much done throughout all this stuff. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay. And I, I just did the exercise for you, by the way. This exercise here, you know, at uh, section 5.1, implement a 3-bit by 3-bit binary adder using n or log gates in Logisim. We just did it in less than half, an, about, about half an hour, okay? Um, so when, if you want to do it again on your own, you know, you can more, you're more than welcome to do it. Um, if you do it without watching the video, it, it, it actually helps you understand how to, make, how to use the tool better. Okay. But if you want to watch the video and just follow along, that's cool too. But when you look at section 6, that is when we talk about why the previous design is slow because it relies on the carry bit to ripple through each bit. And it talks about you know, the other stuff here. Um, it, does this look familiar to you? Yeah. It should, right? Yeah, this is the, the kind of stuff that we just talked about. Q is the intermediate sum row, and K is the intermediate carry row. Okay, so this stuff is pretty, you know, um, easy to understand. This is just an expansion of that. This is an expansion of Q. You know, by definition, QI is the result of adding XI and YI, and then you expand you know, what is the result of something. It is, you know, uh, X not Y plus uh, not XY, okay? So all of this stuff here is just you know, by definition, by expanding and stuff like that. But then it gets you know, kind of weird. We'll talk about all of this stuff you know, next uh, Tuesday. So when you read this stuff and go like, well, you know, I'm, I'm lost in the uh, transformation, don't worry about the details of the actual steps of the transformation. Pay attention to the end result, okay? Because that is what really, really matters. And then once we get to this part here, we say, okay, we'll go ahead and define g of i to be this. We'll define the p of i, oops. We'll define p of i to be that. So now we, we can express k i plus one to be blah, 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 like that. And then once we have that, we can generalize. <laughs> this, is, this is the part, this is, this is what, where we really want to get to. How many people are familiar with the summation sigma notation? Okay, um, it's kind of like sigma, except this is an or of all the subcomponents. <laughs> this is an n of all of these you know, subcomponents. This plus is a is a or. Okay, because you know we are we are borrowing the terminology or the symbol uh, the symbolism of um, electrical engineering or computer engineering. So this plus is, a, is technically an or. This is another n. Um, but it, the nice thing about this 
is if you want to know about, okay, what is K16? Okay, you just plug in, you know, N to be 15, right? Because, you know, we want N plus 1 to be 16, so N has to be 15 itself, right? And then you look at this, go, oh, okay, so I goes from 0 to 15, G of I, which means, you know, if you expand the terms out, the first one is G0, blah, 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 G1, blah, 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 G2, blah, 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 all the way up to G15, blah, blah, blah. And then each blah, blah, blah is, is, is nested. So this I is used to control the indexing of J. So when I is 0, J starts with 1. When I is 1, J starts with 2, and so on. J goes from whatever I plus 1 is to N minus 1. N is 15 in this case because we're trying to figure out what is K16, right? So now you, know, you can figure out what P components we need to in include in this conjunction. And then this is one whole chunk by itself. This is a separate chunk that you have to compute. So you have K0, and then over here you have P of I, and this is a conjunction. So we are, we are doing a conjunction with P0, P1, P2, all the way to up to P15 in this case, because N is 15 for this particular example. Is this going to be a long thing once you expand it out? You betcha. But is it, is it mechanical? Extremely so. So we like things that are mechanical because once you can express the general layout of something, no matter how complex it expands to, it can be done in an automated way. Yes, go ahead. Uh, I was thinking, could you make the observation that the, the or is the carryover and then the end is like the result of the previous ones? Like in the, in the first equation, when you expand everything out, it turns out to be this. Um, so far, we haven't seen anything like this. <laughs> so this is something that we will talk about next um, um, Tuesday. Now, what about this thing here? Why is this easy to compute? Do you see Kn plus 1 be referring to Kn? No? What, what, what does it refer to? It refers to Gi, right? But what is Gi? Gi is Xi, Yi. But the x, y are given to you from the very beginning of this operation. There's no, no propagational delay whatsoever. Because those has always been, they, they have been there since the beginning of the operation. What about the p's? P of j, p of j is x of j plus y of j, or the or between those two. Once again, the x and the y's are always there. So there's no delay calculating the g of g terms or the p terms. Ah. K, P terms, fine. What about the K term, K0? K0 is an input to the entire atom. So it is always there as well. In other words, this whole thing does not utilize propagation logic at all. There's no dependency on Kn when you try to compute Kn plus 1. And that's why you know this is called a carry look ahead mechanism which is a very misleading term. It really just means that you can calculate the carry of any column without needing any type of propagation. And this is how the you know, commercial uh, designs actually are done. Because you know, this is fast, okay? Um, it does use up more transistors, as you can probably imagine. But the amount of speed that you're gaining from this kind of design is worth the extra uh, silicon that you need to use on the die. Okay, so this is just a preview of what we'll be talking about next Tuesday. Um, and then we'll go ahead and implement, you know, as your homework, you will probably go ahead and implement a 3-bit adder using this kind of design. It's not going to look, it is not going to look clean like this. <laughs> it, it will be a little bit messy. But then you can also use abstraction, like you know, some components and stuff like that, to make it look less messy. And then you can also use multi-bit pins and multi-bit gates to make it look even less messy. So when you're all done, it can, it can look very clean if you use the features in LogiSim correctly. Okay, so you have a preview of what you need to do 
next uh, week, you also know exactly what we'll be talking about next week. Now, after adders, okay, I'm suspecting Tuesday itself is enough to talk about the look ahead adding. After that, we're going to switch to subtraction, as some of you, you know, have already thought about. But what about subtraction? As it turns out, subtraction is surprisingly easy. Because when you look at the length of the subtraction slide, okay, it talks about a little bit of the R and the, the B and the R. But when you look at the look ahead mechanism, okay, same, same kind of you know, stuff that we had to deal with. Uh, does this look familiar to you? Except, you know, uh, we're using T instead of K, right? Sorry? No, it's the same. You know, that part is the same too. Yeah, the structure is identical to addition. But there's minor differences too. Uh, the minor difference is how are G and P defined? So scroll up a little bit. No, I forgot to mention what how to define uh, G and P terms. I only said that the G and P terms are defined differently. Ah, okay, but from this you can probably oh right there. Okay, I this is this is me. I wrote this and then I forgot. You know, I did not read carefully my own stuff. Okay. So we can redefine G and P terms you know, differently. So G of I is now defined like this, and the P of I is defined like that. So once you redefine you know, the G and the P terms, the rest are exactly the same. Okay? In other words, if one homework assignment asks you to implement an adder using the look ahead mechanism, and if the next one is asking you to implement a subtractor, if you do it right, if you structure the code correctly, the change can be done in two minutes to change an adder into a subtractor. Okay, so we'll talk about all of that stuff next week. Okay, so we'll do look ahead addition, look ahead subtraction, and regular subtraction next week. So by the end of next week, we would have done all the usual basic calculations. Um, and convert everything into gate logic. And then after that, we'll start to talk about, but what about negative numbers? How do we represent negative values using you know, just zeros and ones? Okay, so that would be another topic for that. Are there any questions at this point? Of all the topics that we have talked about up to this point, are there any questions? Low level or high level questions? Questions? How do you guys like uh, logic sim so far? It's okay. You know, it is kind of buggy. So if it, it if it doesn't seem to be working correctly, um, you just you know, save the file, uh, close, and then restart it. Okay. Yeah. Many times you know, that will fix the problem. Yep. It is open source. So for those of you who want to take on the challenge and go like, I'm going to fix it, you can. <laughs> it's an open source project. Any other questions? Any problems reading the notes? You know, because you know, I sometimes you know, people tell me that the way I write, you know, make simple things look much harder. No, no particular problems. Yep. I have a question. Uh, so, where can we uh, do the recording of the lecture? YouTube. So if you want to watch the recording of the lectures, you just you know, go to YouTube and you go straight to the channel SOMPROFS, S-O-M-E-P-R-O-F-S, -E um, and then you just check out the videos. Now sometimes I'm, you know, I may not rename the, the videos correctly, so you will see, you know, CI, uh, I mean CISP, question, question, question mark, 2017, question, 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 question. But from the date of the recording, you can imply okay, what it is. And I only teach this class on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So if you see a particular, if you see recordings on a Tuesday or a Thursday, it's for you. 
The other days, you know, I, take, I teach two classes, so I have to be more careful with the labeling. Yep. So Soundprox is the... Um, it's uh, the name of the channel. Of the yep. Channel. So if you go to YouTube first, you can use uh, the search bar and look up Soundprox, and the first thing you will locate is the channel itself. So you just click on the channel, and then you click on videos. Uh, the recordings are listed in a reversed chronological order, which means the most recent recording is usually the first one. So that, that can also help you locate the, uh, the recordings. So that's a good question. That's one thing that is not helpful when I put it into the recording because you have to find the recording first. <laughs> Any other questions? And this is a good resource because you know everything that I do now, you know, especially today, I use my documents camera instead of using the whiteboard. So everything that I actually did is recorded. So I think you know it's pretty much at least ninety percent of what I actually do in the class. So you know, gestures like this or other type of gestures, obviously, it's not recorded. But in the programming class, that's not important. Any other questions? Now you guys are hungry. You're just thinking about lunch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. So let's go get lunch. I'll see you guys next Tuesday. Have a nice weekend. But spend some time to make sure that you understand all the material up to this point and read ahead a little bit. Okay. I know I'm nagging, but <clears throat> it is important. <laughs>